So lead code 1640, check array formation through concatenation. So for this problem, you're given an array of integers, which is your target, and you're given an array of pieces, which are the things you can work with, and you can concatenate these pieces together to form the target array. And you can reorder them in any way you want, but you cannot reorder the integers inside of one piece. And if you can concatenate them in some way so that the resulting array is the target array, then you need to return true. Otherwise, you need to return false. Okay, so the way to do this is since all of the integers in the target array are distinct, and also here at the bottom it says that all of the integers in pieces are distinct as well, then what this tells you is that it's, it's trivial to see, like there are no multiple combinations, there are no different ways of doing this. Like if, if there is a way of doing this, meaning that you should return true, then there is only one way of doing it because all of the integers are distinct. So you never have like ambiguity, you never have two different ways of uh, solving a local problem. So what, what this means is that, for example, let's say that we are trying to build this part of the target array, right? Well, since all of the numbers are distinct, both in R and in pieces, then it's trivial to find the piece that can go in this slot. Let's call this a slot. So what piece can go somewhere if we need a 15? Well, there's only going to be at most one piece that has a 15 in its first position. So that's going to be the piece that we want, right? And every piece has at least one position. So the first element is always there. There are no empty pieces. So yeah, we're just gonna have a map that maps every number in the array, possibly, or rather every number in the pieces array to its piece. So you have every, as a key, you have the first element of every piece and the value mapped by that key is the piece itself. So for example, here uh, we would have, the map would have 16 mapping to 16, 18, and 49, right? Okay, so let's implement that. So we have our map, then we loop through all of the pieces, we take the first element of the piece, and then we do the mapping. So we map piece with start first equals to the current piece, right? So at the end of this code, what you have is you have, you have a map that given the number that you want, gives you the piece that has as a first element that number if there is any, and obviously this could, like if you look up into this map, it could return undefined for some values, and that's fine. That just means that you cannot, uh, that just means that you're gonna have to return false. For example, here we would have to search for a piece that starts with 49, but there is none. There's no piece that starts with 49, so you just had to return false. Okay, so now let's implement that second part. So now you have your result, which initially is an empty array, and then you just loop through all of the positions in the array, in, the, in your target array. And notice that I'm not updating i here at the end. That's because I'll do it at the end of the iteration. You'll see in a second. And what I do is I take the current number that I want to fill, because remember our result needs to become at the end, needs to become equal to the target array. So right now I'm looking at, okay, what's the number that I need now? Right now, for example, I need a 15, okay? So I look up into my map and I ask, okay, what is there a piece? And if so, which piece is it? So is there a piece that starts with 15, right? So I just look up into the map in O of one time complexity. And if there is a piece, then we can do something. But if there is no piece, then it means that we cannot continue. And so we must return false. So from now on, we are sure that we did have a piece indeed. So we have a value in piece. And so what that means is that we can add to our result the piece that we have found, right? And now I can also go forward in the array by piece.length positions. So that's why I didn't do I++ here. That's why I'm not going forward in the array here, right? So now all of the positions from i to i plus piece that length are taken care of. So at the end, we're just gonna have to check if they are equal, but for now we can say, okay, those positions are gone. We cannot do anything more with them because there's a piece that's occupying all of those positions. Okay, so that's why we increment here by piece dot length. And now at the end, you just need to check if the two arrays are equal. And because we know that all of the arrays have just integers inside of them, we can just compare them like this. So we just join them together as a string and we compare the string. 
So that's, that's it. I'll submit the solution to show that it works. And the time complexity is O of n, because it just goes through every number, like once or twice or something. And the space complexity is O of n, because you have your result and you have the map where n is the amount of integers in the pieces or in the array. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, so that's it for me today. Thank you for watching and bye.